I want to go over everything that we have learned from Carl. So a lot of you guys are new, it is great, and we really moved on to YouTube in a big way. So a lot of these things I've explained on TikTok, but we're gonna dive deep right now into what we've learned from our proof of concept electric truck. So right here, this is our 1962 Kenworth, and we might as well start on, let's go through problems things that do not work because we'll be honest we'll own those issues they're not huge but to start with the engine works great absolutely the generator works fine soundproofing in the cab was not adequate in 1962 and you wouldn't think that that should be a big deal and we didn't think it would be a big deal but i'll be honest it was more comfortable to drive with the sound when this truck was a mechanical diesel the reason for it is that it makes no noise when it's moving which means you hear every single little thing i can hear my leveling valves my airbags on the back end when you hit bumps you just hear any little rattle or squeak is so noisy because it's not making any noise so we're actually going to increase our soundproofing something i did not think would have to be done on an electric truck and we're making sure that absolutely nothing in these trucks can rattle because it will drive you insane okay one of the things that did not work on our electric truck is the tesla motor works but if you look down here believe it or not the output shaft of a passenger car is not rated to pull a fully loaded semi-trailer <laughs> No, and uh, we end up snapping these U-joints or snapping that output shaft. We've actually put a cuff and a collar with some shear bolts in it now. So if you're gentle with it, you don't really snap it. Like even moving to, like an empty trailer, it's fine. Um, if we get somebody in there that likes playing around with a power and we let somebody else drive it and they mash their foot, it has so much torque and this is so much weight to move that it will snap that output shaft. But we knew that going in. So those E-axles that we have now, we were told that to get them was gonna take up to 15 to 16 months. We didn't wanna wait that long, so what we did is we did this to test it empty. This allowed us to test our control system. Can we engage the truck motors? Well, we can actually send power to it, test the battery charging, but unfortunately, until we get an actual purpose designed electric motor in this truck we just can't pull a load of trailer with it we blew up the first air compressor i wouldn't put it in a black box <laughs> and we didn't have liquid cooling so now we are liquid cooling the air compressor because it got so hot we actually before the truck show last year blew up the original air compressor we got it too hot in the black box and it overheated and right before the truck show we now have a maximum Canadian tire air compressor in there. <laughs> because the uh, old one grenaded, it got too hot. It, right before the truck show, we were panicked. And I mean like day before the truck show. So we ran the 110 voltage from the inverter and we plugged a Canadian tire, Mastercraft, maximum, whatever, air compressor in it to get us through the truck show. It works, it's not ideal but lesson learned so the new uh air compressor is actually already in the shop i can show you but it's it's got liquid cooling it's much larger and it's ip68 rated which means we can mount it to the outside of the box which brings us on to the next point one of the other issues we had was coolant um we were getting the overly hot temperatures so we had tied the ev rad in with the uh diesel generator rad now it had enough coolant that it could cool the electric motors and the batteries when you're running that but when you're charging the batteries and discharging and producing the heat from the generator it just was not enough we also tried out electric fans we should have just went back to the mechanical fan with the generator running but what we've done and what we've learned from that engineering is that now on the new truck we have two separate rads. The EV component rads are completely separate from the generator rads because the EVs like colder temperatures than the generator does. So with lesson learned, we're changing that up on the new truck, but that is one of those things we should have thought of before. We put the fuel tank up front here and we put the batteries behind. Turns out the batteries are actually a little bit heavier than the fuel tank. 
I'm gonna swap those out. I'm gonna have the fuel tank farther back and the batteries forward. What that's gonna do is allow more weight to go onto the steer tires and less weight on the drives. You want the weight up front there, better steering, better handling, and better payload. I would make that a little bit of a difference in the change. Overall though, I do, I am really happy about the weight. When we started this truck, this truck um, was 9,000 kgs. When we finished, it was 8,800 kgs. We lost 200 kgs with, you know, about 400 pounds, 450 pounds of weight by going electric and this diesel electric. So we gained 500 pounds of payload. I would just like more weight up front. What's actually cool about that 500 pounds, not only did we gain 500 pounds, but the government, because it's electric driven, allows us to have an extra 3,100 pounds uh, for being an electric vehicle. You have increased weight limits here. So in total, we get like 3,500 extra pounds of payload. We get 1,700 kgs of extra weight that we can pack with that. Assuming we can get a better motor. We put the plug on the driver's side this is if you pull into a charger station, you can just pull in. Basically, it's like a plug-in hybrid, I guess. I would put that on the passenger side because it is really hard to get the driver's side to a fast charger. And I'd also, I'd like to move it up front so that you could pull your semi-truck into a car charging station because you piss off Karen so badly. Like last time we pulled this thing into a car charging station, we made so many people angry because they just saw a logging truck blocking like three, four Tesla fast charging or car electric vehicle fast charging things. And I think that's hilarious and I would like to do it more. So I'll, if we make it on that side, it's easier to get to them. Okay, one of the next things is the generator on the back end. So this is one of those, let's do what we can to test out the charging. But believe it or not, you should not have the back end completely open. It's not good for rain, dust, mud. As you can see, we got a tarp covering it, which also increases the heat. But on the next truck, um, Dan Foss Editron was actually kind enough to allow us to get a full on IP68 or 67 rated liquid cool generator for the back end of the motor. So it's all waterproof, rainproof, dust proof, liquid cooled, but this got us to do the testing. It's absolutely one of those things that is not good and is getting changed in the future. Man, we made a lot of sacrifices to get this truck done and proven and tested. I wouldn't run an old dirty straight pipe on her. Probably want to put a muffler. Like I love straight pipes. I thought it would sound nice, but a generator runs at one constant RPM, like 1750 RPM, which is kind of annoying straight pipe. We ended up installing a muffler on her now, but yeah, normally a truck because it's throaty, it's grabbing gears. It sounds great. This truck just sounds like a screaming four year old. It, it, it's basically like firing up your truck revving it to 1700 with straight pipes and just leaving it revving at 17. Wouldn't really recommend straight pipes on the diesel electric version. All things considered, Carl absolutely did his job we needed him to do as a proof of concept. What it allowed us to do is it allowed us to check our wiring harness, check our battery installation. It allowed us to get that fuel mileage, that range. How much did our miles per gallon change? We have a 50% increase in fuel mileage from when Carl used to drive just as a diesel mechanical with a 15 speed transmission. And then we have the different now, we had a 50 to 60% increase in fuel mileage. It allowed us to check our generator install, the wiring up of the generator, wiring up of the batteries, the wiring harness and the controls for the truck to make sure that we could actually build the truck. We could get that data. We could get the, does the torque deliver the way we think the torque is going to deliver? We put it on like a little dyno. We put the engine under the generator under a load test. It really, how much range does a logging truck get out of its batteries? We learned all that data and we learned things like upgrade cooling system, upgrade. It allowed us to do a lot of tests where we didn't quite know how things were going to play out in the real world. We got that data from this proof of concept. Yeah, we'll upgrade a little bit, a few things farther down the line, but it allowed us to jump ahead to getting this production truck that's in the shop right now, miles ahead of where we are. If you look at 
We spent, we built this, had it on the road last August, September, October, getting all that data testing we needed. Then we were able to sit down December, January, February, March, and really like hash out that engineering, getting it all fully done. What did we learn? What did we need to change? How do we redesign it? And that truck is now a professionally done truck with lessons learned. So overall, it was a learning experience. Not everything worked perfectly, but it's a perfect truck to me.